Hello friends, welcome to my channel. You are watching Electronic Stuff. Today in this video, we are going to understand about PN junction diode. So here, a PN junction diode is formed when a P-type semiconductor is fused to an N-type semiconductor. As you can see here, this is the P-type semiconductor and this is the N-type semiconductor. And friends, in my previous video, I already discussed about P-type and N-type semiconductors. And you can watch my video by clicking the links in the description box. And here, the n-type semiconductors are formed by adding pentavalent impurities, whereas p-type semiconductors are formed by adding trivalent impurities to intrinsic semiconductor. And also we know that in n-type semiconductors, electrons are majority charge carriers and holes are minority charge carriers, whereas in p-type semiconductors, holes are majority charge carriers and electrons are minority charge carriers. And this region this is the region where p-type and n-type semiconductors are joined and this region is called a junction. In simple words, the region where p-type and n-type semiconductors are joined is called a p-n junction. Now let's see what happens when a p-type semiconductor and n-type semiconductors are joined. As you can see here, n-type semiconductors consist of higher concentration of electrons, whereas P-type semiconductors consist of higher concentration of holes. And when these P-type semiconductors and N-type semiconductors are joined, then the process of diffusion takes place. Now let's see what is the process of diffusion. As this phenomena states that, charge carriers have natural tendency to diffuse from higher concentration region to lower concentration region. And as you can see here, N-side has excess number of electrons. So these electrons diffuse from higher concentration region to lower concentration region. It means these electrons move from N side to P side and similarly P side has excess number of holes. So these holes diffuse from P side to N side. So what will happen here? These electrons and holes will get recombined. So what will happen after this recombination? See here. When these electrons jump from N-type to P-type, then we will be getting positively charged ions here. This is because these atoms which are presented here loses or donates an electron. So we know that when an atom loses or donates its extra electron present in it, then it will be converted into a positive ion. And similarly, in the P-side, if this hole is having an extra electron added into it, it means that particular atom gains one electron. And we know that when an atom gains one electron, then it gets converted into a negative ion. So as a result of this, a net positive charge is built at the N side and a net negative charge is built at the P side of PN junction diode. So after this, all these electrons which are presented here, will try to jump towards this p-type semiconductor. But these electrons are not able to move towards this semiconductor. This is because these ions which are presented here are negatively charged. And we know that according to Coulomb's law, like charges repel and unlike charges attract each other. And we know that electrons are negatively charged. So these negatively charged ions will repel these electrons and similarly these positively charged ions will repel these holes. And the noteworthy point here is, as many as positively charged ions we will be getting and as many as negatively charged ions we will be getting depends on the number of recombinations. If the number of recombinations between electrons and holes are more, then the more number of atoms will get converted into positive and negative ions. So at a particular point, we can say that these net negative charges and these net positive charges are acting like barriers for electrons and holes. And these net negative charges formed at P side of the PN junction diode is called negative barrier voltage. While these positive charges formed at the N side of PN junction diode is called positive barrier voltage. And the total charge formed at this p-n junction diode is called barrier voltage or barrier potential. And size of this barrier voltage at p-n junction is depends on the amount of doping and type of material used. 
if this is a silicon diode then the barrier potential for silicon diode is 0.7 volts and similarly if it is a germanium diode then the barrier potential for this germanium diode is 0.3 volts and this region which is near the junction in this region flow of charge carriers are decreased so this region is also called as depletion region or in other words this region is full of immobile charge carriers so this region is also called as depletion region and this depletion region acts like a wall between p type and n type semiconductors now let's see the biasing of pn junction diode the process of applying the external voltage to a pn junction diode is called biasing and this external voltage is applied in two methods forward biasing and reverse biasing now let's see the pn junction diode in forward biasing when the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the p side and negative terminal of the battery is connected to the n side then the pn junction diode is said to be forward biased so when the pn junction diode is in forward bias the positive terminal of the battery will repel these holes in p region and the negative terminal of the battery will repel these electrons in n region so these two charge carriers move towards the junction and if the applied external voltage is much more than this barrier voltage some holes and some free electrons will enter this depletion region and hence the width of this depletion region will reduce and the when the electrons and holes enter this depletion region the positive donor ions which are presented here and negative acceptor ions which are presented here will regain its electrons and holes as a result of this the depletion region completely disappears therefore due to this applied external voltage electron will flow in this direction and holes will flow in opposite to the flow of electrons it is in this direction and due to this net movement of electrons and holes constituent current flow in this pn junction diode so this is how pn junction diode works in the condition of forward biased now let's see the working of pn junction diode in case of reverse biased when the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the n side and negative terminal of the battery is connected to the p side then the pn junction diode is said to be reverse biased so when the pn junction diode is in reverse bias then the electrons which are in n region and holes in the p region are attracted away from the junction and because of this attraction number of positive ions in n region and number of negative ions in p region increases and hence the depletion region becomes wider and due to this wider depletion region no current will flow in this diode but in practice a very small current in order of few microamperes flow in this pn junction diode and this current is because of minority charge carriers we know that holes are minority charge carriers in n region and electrons are minority charge carriers in p region so here due to this reverse biasing holes which are present in n region are get repelled by this positive terminal of the battery and the electrons which are present in p region are get repelled by this negative terminal of the battery so these two charge carriers move towards the junction so due to this net movement of electrons and holes constituent current flow in the pn junction diode but this current flow is very small because the number of minority charge carriers in both region are very small and if we ignore this current then we can consider that there will be no current flowing in this pn junction diode so this is how pn junction diode works in the case of reverse bias so this is all about pn junction diode thank you for watching please like and subscribe for more videos